All right, City Leaks have finally returned in Japan. So we have some tournament results that we can look at here from Japan in our future formats, and we can see what is doing good right now over in Japan now that the City Leaks have returned. Limitless TCG here does have City Leaks um, enabled, so you can actually see all of the recent City Leaks over in Japan. They were on hiatus for a little bit. You can see May 6th to September 7th, but they're finally back, so we can look ahead at the meta and we can see what is winning in the future format they have stellar crown and i think they have a few of the uh cards that we'll be getting in surging sparks like sylviani x and sarah Leggy x but uh they are mostly playing in the stellar crown format and i'm excited to take a look here at some of the recent results um and see what decks are winning in these tournaments there's a lot of decks we can look at a lot of tournaments to look at already since they've returned so uh, we'll try to keep it like brief free tournament. i don't want to go through every single tournament deck because we're gonna be here for a while but i'm super excited to look at some results here and if y'all are excited for the video make sure to leave a like on the video and if you're new to the channel subscribe down below be greatly appreciated we're on the road to 17 thousand subs here and if y'all are excited for stellar crown to get ready for that because i got a lot of content on stellar crown coming out very soon here on the second and main channel too so we'll start off here with the first tournament back since the um break from the tournaments we see here the deck that won was Charizard. Now, Charizard is, of course, going to be looking to be a pretty good deck in our new format. Though this Charizard list here doesn't play any new cards, it looks like. It just strictly is Charizard Pidgeot. There's a one Pidgeotto in the deck and two Charmeleon to go with the TM Evo. There's Miss Energy, too, to help a little bit more against Reggie Drago. What I'm curious is, I haven't really looked in too much into these lists um, yet or the decks from these tournaments. I'm interested to see if Reggie Drago is seen playing in Japan right now because Reggie Drago has... Um, potentially fallen off maybe a little bit with Stellar Crown, so I'm interested to see if it's doing good at all. Uh, the deck that got second place was Raging Bolt. Not too surprised to see Raging Bolt lose to Charizard. It's not a great matchup for Bolt, especially if they're playing like TM Evo. It might get a little bit harder. Um, now, this Raging Bolt build actually plays Briar, which is interesting. You can only play this card if your opponent has exactly two prizes remaining, and then during this turn, if your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from attack, used by your Terra Pokemon, you take one more prize. So I guess the idea of the Briar in the deck here is you can take a knockout with Ogre Pond to take two prizes. Maybe that helps in specific matchups, where if you don't put a one prize down, your opponent always can walk into Briar for the most part. So... I guess that's the idea of playing a Briar here within a Raging Bolt. It was able to get second place. Um, I guess Briar would help against Charizard too, actually, right? So, because you can use um, Ogre Pawn against Charizard. Actually, interesting too, the Charizard list that won was not using Dusknor or Dusclops in the list. The third place list here, actually, we have our first look at a deck from the future here. Far into the future, this should be, I am assuming, Surging Sparks, I think. And that is Sarah Ledge EX. Now, if you don't know what this card does, it's actually not a bad card. Um, it's got two attacks. you got Abyssal Belize that does 30 damage plus 20 more damage for each energy in your discard pile. And then you have the other attack that is 280. It does require Fire, Psychic Metal, um, a little costly. But that first attack is a lot stronger. And it's a bit easier to pull off the attack. Um, a little bit easier when you're discarding all these energy cards. And that's kind of what you want to do with your Sarah Ledge EX. Um, you can see this build here does not play any other energy type. It does play a legacy energy, but it doesn't have any other shenanigans in the deck for that second um, Terra attack. Mostly just relying on that first attack with a lot of discard effects. Like, of course, the Pokestop, the Carmine, the Research, stuff like that. Three Vessels. Just try and discard as much energy as you can so that you can um, do a ton of damage with Sarah Ledge EX. And you can hit pretty hard pretty quickly. It was able to get top four. Then we got Dragapult here in the top four, too. We got Dragapult Pidgeot. Dragapult is looking to be a new um, top deck in the format with Stellar Crown. All thanks to the brand new A-Spec card here. The new A-Spec Sparkling Crystal does allow Dragapult to do Phantom Dive for one energy. And it synergizes so good with Arvin. It's kind of a no-brainer to not play it. Also, something like Crispin is also a fantastic new addition for Dragapult. You can actually power up your Dragapult with a supporter card now in one turn. So you can see this build is not playing any Zatu or anything, just relying solely on the Dragapult and the Crispin and the Sparkling Crystal to carry it. But like I said, Dragapult is looking to be a great new deck in the format. I'm sure this won't be the last we'll look at Dragapult here in the tournaments. Uh, we do have a Palkia Dusnor deck. We have two Palkia decks, actually. We got a Palkia Dusnor deck here in top eight, playing no area 
zero under deaths. Kind of what we're seeing right now in the online tournament scene is actually there's a lot of Palkia Dusknor doing good right now in the online tournaments. Um, if I was going to do another online tourney video, I'd probably talk about the Palkia decks from the online tourney scene. But there's been a few of those decks getting top eight. And uh, even in Japan here, it's also doing good. But that's not the only way Palkia will see play next format. We got Palkia Noctowl. Now, this is probably going to be the most popular way to play Palkia. Noctowl and Area Zero Under Deaths with Chiropagos fan Rodom. Just basically Palkia with Area Zero Under Deaths lets Palkia do insane damage out of nowhere and we can see that this is the build that might be the best way to play palkia will it be popular overseas when the set comes out in a couple days i'm not too sure but uh we'll see palkia definitely is looking to get a humongous buff um now this build did not win the tournament it did get top eight so it did okay and we got a raging bull or uh, roaring moon deck sorry with petra in here uh looks pretty similar to what we saw from worlds let's play a forest seal though and illumineon i guess and water energy so i actually am trolling it's a lot different than the world's build actually um just yeah water energy and stuff for the greninja and then we got a raging bolt in top eight here um nothing too crazy in the raging bolt all right so that was the first tournament um we're not going to look at every top eight deck like i said there's too many to name off but we can look at this tournament the second tournament it looks like snorlax stall won the tournament everybody's favorite deck good old snorlax now looking at it there's not that many new cards other than it looks like the gravity stone is the only new card within the deck here it does make um each well, as long as I attach the Pokemon on the active spot, each player's active retreat cost is one colors more. So even putting this on, like, Mimikyu, where something can slow the opponent down, or Cornerstone Ogre Pond, just makes it more harder for the opponent. Um, has Hammer. One Hammer is a lot interesting. I mean, only one. Got the two handheld fans. Um, yeah, Snorlax could be good in the new format. We'll have to see on that one. Um, then we got Shempow here in second place. I mean, Pow is pretty cool. It looks pretty similar to the build we saw from Worlds. Um, I think mine is maybe like a few cards. There's no Silene in the deck. There's an Arctabax in the deck too. Uh, but yeah, Pow could be still a good deck. I mean, it's Pow. Not surprising to see it lose to Snorlax in the finals because, I mean, it's not a great deck uh, to beat Snorlax with. There's a Maridon. So Maridon does get some interesting new additions with the new set. The big one is, of course, Area Zero Under Deaths. This actually allows Raikou to be an even deadlier attacker now, which is really good. Raikou is a lot easier to attack with because it only needs like the two energy right like it's pretty easy to power up you can like generator one energy on it and then attach other than you know maridon and iron hands which constantly have you trying to get double energy hits off generator um now the one thing you'll notice there's a terra mewtwo in the deck now there's no psychic energy so why on earth is there a terra mewtwo in the deck this card is useless well it does have a purpose you can maridon for it and this allows you to play down the area zero under deaths and activate the stadium card which is why we're seeing the mewtwo so if you're wondering why there's mewtwo in the deck that is why um, this build of Maridon does have some similarities to the Peony build with the uh, Cassiopeia in the deck here. You can only play this card if it's last card in your hand. So check up the two cards and put them in your hand. Kind of like how Peony operated where it's like you would kind of get rid of your hand and then you would play a supporter that allowed you to get like two items. So that's basically what this card does. So it's kind of like the Wish version of Peony Maridon in a way. So I don't know. Maybe we'll try this deck out when it comes. Like, well, wait, it's already out. But like when we get these new cards, maybe we'll revisit Maridon with the Peony Cassiopeia kind of meme combo. Um, and in top four, there was another Palkia. Um, this Palkia build is playing an Iron Leaves in the deck to help against Charizard. I'm not sure how good the Zard matchup is for Palkia, though I would imagine that the Zard matchup wouldn't be too bad. Thanks to Noctowl, it's actually not too hard to pull off Prime Catcher Cologne Greninja plays early on in the game. Um, I guess one thing to know with Palkia, though, is, like, you don't have energy excel for it other than your own Star Portal, and if you're wasting that on Greninja, well, you could play Crispin with Palkia. I don't think Crispin Palkia is a bad idea. You could Crispin the Water Energy onto the Palkia and then just attach from hand for free. It's probably a decent way to build a Palkia. It's nowhere near, like, as good as Melanie, but I don't know, just an idea. Um, this build is playing the Leaves to help a little bit more against Charizard here. And then we got in the top four here, top eight. Let's see, is there anything else interesting? We have another Raging Bolt playing the new one prize, a Raging Bolt, also playing Briar. Uh, but the new one prize Raging Bolt does 30 damage, 20 your opponent's Pokemon, free energy on it. So could it replace any shocks? Who knows? It does have a snipe attack, which actually is not a bad way to play Raging Bolt because um, you can snipe stuff off your opponent's Invention Manaphy. And of course, plays Briar. And we'll look at the Goldengo deck here real quick too. So Goldengo, Palkia, Dustnor deck. Interesting. Dustnor with Goldengo is an interesting concept. I don't know what value it truly adds to the deck. It does, of course, like Goldengo go do more damage i guess which is nice and also really good with palkia you can also use dust nor to kill manaphy to use greninja so i guess there are some synergies also having the hyper aroma makes it easier to find the dust cloth. So that's that's cool it was in it was able to get top eight all right let's see here we'll go to the next we'll go to another tournament here uh, we'll just like go on like ram tournaments again there's a lot of them to name off this uh, tournament here was won by raging bolt 
pretty standard Raging Bolt list, even from our format here. Um, then we got a couple Dragapult decks. We got a Dragapult Zatu deck. Actually, new Dragapult Zatu with no new cards. No uh, Briar, or no Briar. Well, I guess you could play Briar, but no uh, Crispin, no Sparkling Crystal. Interesting. But we can look at the Dragapult Pidgeot deck, which does happen to have some new cards, obviously. Um, this Dragapult Pidgeot deck is playing a Briar Crispin, as you can see. It's got the Gravity Stone in the deck. I don't know what matchup the Gravity Stone is good against, but... It is an annoying tool in some situations. Then has, of course, Sparkling Crystal. And like I said, this is potentially going to be the best way to play Dragapult in our new set. Maybe it's better than Reggie Drago. Who knows? Um, we got a Lawson deck in top eight. It looks like it's Sablezard, uh, which does play Gravity Stone also within the deck. So Gravity Stone, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's better than I thought. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, Sablezard, it's not a bad deck. I think it could be the best way to play Lost Box in our current format. Don't know how it'll be in the Stellar format, but Radiant Charizard is a good attacker. Being able to abuse it multiple times in a game with the Lost Zone engine isn't a bad way to play it. Hmm. Let's see. Turbo could be good, though. If Palkia picks up in popularity, I could see Turbo being good, too. Um, and then we'll look at the Reggie Drago deck here in the top eight. Um, so, yeah, Reggie Drago doesn't really gain that many new cards with the new set. Um, there is one, okay, there's one new card in the deck. You can see it's the Terra Orb. This is not coming out, though, I think until, yeah, this is coming out in, um, Surging Sparks, because this came out in the, the, the Sylveon Serra Ledge starter decks, which we are not getting. This card is pretty good for Terra decks, but we are not getting this card yet, so this is a little bit of far, far in the future, but other than that, I mean, Drago doesn't really, there's no new dragons in the deck. Alolan Executor, I don't think is out quite yet in Japan. I think we have to wait for that to release, so I could be wrong. Um, there's an interesting deck here we can look at. We got the Tropagos deck. This is not in the top eight, but I wanted to look at a Tropagos deck regardless. I'm sure we might see another one, maybe in top eight, but this one plays Pidgeot and Dustmore in the deck and Luxray. Kind of a bit of a take, not playing like the Bouflant or anything in the deck for the uh, the tank. Interesting. All right, so let's move on to another tournament here. Let's look at the one that the Shempow deck won. We'll look at the winning Shempow list here. Shempow with an Ice Q. Did Ice Q, does Ice Q do anything relevant? I'm not sure. I know what it does, but I mean, like, what's it for? It's got Scalding Block, does 160 damage, and then your uh, opponent can't attack next turn. I don't know the best matchup for it. Maybe Reggie Drago. I don't know. I'm trying to think what matchup that could be good in. I know it can infrared us against Ogre Pawn, I guess, which is nice. Um, I guess that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, Champau with Unfair Stamp, too, over Prime Catcher, but just play two counters on a boss. Interesting list. Did take down Charizard, of course. Um, this Charizard list plays one new card, and that is, of course, Briar, which, like I said, this is probably going to be how Charizard sees play. Like, I don't think Charizard gains much with the new set, literally, but Briar, and maybe the new Great Tree A spec, which we'll have to see if any decks play in that. Iron Thorns was in top, uh, four here. Thorns could be another deck that doesn't gain any new cards. I know it does play that one of Gravity Stone, but uh, I don't really think there's many new cards from the new set that Iron Thorns gains. If anything, it maybe gets better if it's better into, like, Palkia, if that ends up being a little bit more popular. Um, got another Turbo Moon here. This one does play Unfair Stamp as the A-Spec over Prime Catcher, but it still commits to the four Pokemon Catcher. Let's see here. We got a Tropagos that did make top eight here. It's once again, looks similar to the build we already just looked at. So actually, I think it might be the same 60, actually. Same. Tropagos, Pidgeot, Noctowl, but no Bouflon playing Dusknor and Luxray in the deck. Interesting way to play Tropagos. Tropagos could be one of those decks, though, that does have a lot of ways to be played. So maybe that's just kind of how it's going to be when, uh, the card that does come out. All right, let's move on to another tournament. Look at the one that Lugia won. Let's see how Lugia's doing in the new format. We got Lugia here winning in the tournament with uh, not a, not many new cards. None at all. Though, to be fair, Lugia is another deck that kind of doesn't gain anything with the new set. Like, I don't really know what Lugia is going to see play with with this new set. Um, but the one thing it does have is, of course, the Wellspring Ogre Pond. Now, that might not seem like an uncommon thing. Some Lugia st uh, decks do play it. However, my kind of idea is playing Wellspring Ogre Pond in Lugia might just be better going forward because it actually allows you to also use Area Zero Under Death. So while it might not seem like a great attacker, like there's a lot of times where Wellspring Ogre Pond is like never coming up at all in a game when you're just running them over with Sinchino Hands and Lugia, which usually just end up being the better attackers over the Ogre Pond. But if you're going to play the Ogre Pond, you can at least then use Area Zero Under Death if you play against one of those decks. And actually being able to bench more Pokemon is nice because you can bench more Minchino Chinos, you can actually start over benching too before you even summoning star. There's a lot of games I play with Lugia where like my bench ends up getting clogged up before I even do summoning star. And sometimes I want to bench something, but I can't because I need to save those spots for the Archeops. But now if you bench Ogre Pond, you can actually use um, Area Zero Under Death. So playing Ogre Pond might just have to be normal in Lugia now because it gives you a better advantage against those decks using um, 
area zero. So I kind of wanted to highlight that. Uh, we got a Guardy deck here getting second place. Again, Guardy, which is another deck that, like, you look here, doesn't gain any new cards in the new set. It's just the same, like, Guardy 60 we've been looking at. It's kind of a shame, to be honest with you, but it is what it is. We got a Lost Pult here, top four. I'm not sure how good Lost Pult is. If Drago kind of falls off, then maybe the deck gets better, but I don't know. I don't even know if it really beats, like, Dragapult Mirror, though. Um, the top four deck is not available, but we do have a couple Sarah Ledge decks here we can look at here in the top eight. Like I said, this card is not coming out in Stellar Crown, but I think we're getting it within Surging Sparks, I'm pretty sure. Or it's going to be a tin promo, I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure it's Surging Sparks, so, but this build is using Armor Rouge. So look at that, you got a little uh, Sarah Ledge thing going on, but plays a bunch of energy. Like I said, you're trying to lean into the energy for the attack. Also, keep in mind, it's playing the energy, um, so you can actually try to use the uh, other attack, too, for 280 damage. Which is interesting, and uh, also plays the two Monkey Dory, because it does have some Dark and Luminous in the deck, so I guess Monkey Dory to heal. It's an interesting concept, plays two Squawk, just a bunch of discarding cards like Research and Carmine. Um, and I guess you can base into the Sarah Ledge too to build it up. We got another one here. This one is just more straightforward, also playing a new card we haven't gotten yet, that probably won't be coming out until, of course, Surging Sparks, the new Perfect Mixer, which allows you to search deck for up to five cards, and discard them. Pretty good card with Sarah Ledge's attack that needs to do a bunch of damage for each energy in the discard pile. So that's cool. This one did get top eight, playing Squawk, just playing a ton of energy. We got 20 energy in the deck, so that's pretty insane. Um, let's see here. We got another Lugia here in top eight. Um, this one also plays a new Ace back. So I, I don't know how good this actually is, but this is, seems to be okay. If you find this card early on in the game, you can literally discard um, two Archeops for free, so it's not a bad way to play Lugia. The downside is you can't play Legacy Energy, and you can see this Lugia build is going back to, like, the Cinchinos and stuff. Just has to commit to the Colas package again. But if you play that a spec, I guess you can then play um, Arvin, which is kind of cool. Look at this Roaring Moon deck here that won this tournament here. It was another Turbo Roaring Moon with a few cards. We got the Ancient Booster Capsule in the deck, got the Mew in the deck being added. Also playing Energy Stickers, interesting, to kind of gamble for extra energy attachments, which is kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, Turbo Moon winning that, not, not surprised to see, because it was able to beat Dragapult here, actually, in the finals. Uh, best of one maybe makes a difference, especially if you're going first with a Stage 1 deck or Stage 2 deck, but it's Dragapult once again with a few new additions, the Sparkling Crystal, the Briar, and the Crispin looking pretty juicy. What else do we got in this tournament? There's a Dialga that made top 8, but... You know, you can see here it doesn't have any new cards. Plays a Mimikyu, which is fascinating. Um, I guess, yeah, nothing too crazy in the Dialga deck there. Let's see here. A lot of a lot of Raging Bolt winning these tournaments. Jeez. Uh, I guess we can click on one of them. Um, yeah, Raging Bolt um, does have one other way it can see play. And this is actually the way that I was talking about. So Raging Bolt could see play with Noctowl in Area Zero Under Death. So instead of just playing, like, Pokestop and, like, Turbo stuff, instead you can play Area Zero Under Death because you're already playing Ogre Pond, right? So, like, you already get to play the Area Zero Under Death um, to begin with, and then you can actually then bench the uh, Ogre Pond, and then you can use the Stadium, and then you can fill your bench up and actually start up using cards like Noctowl. Noctowl's pretty cool, because you can use Noctowl to find two trainer cards, which can find you, like, Energy Retrieval and Sada, which a lot of the time equates to a big knockout. So, really cool concept. Does have the fan of Rodom in there. Just a lot of, like, consistency. He's got the Briar, or the Crispin, sorry, not the Briar. I keep getting the names mixed up. The Crispin in the deck. Pheasantipity and stuff still in there. So, like, you still got the normal Raging Bull stuff. But I do really like the idea of playing Noctowl in the deck um, with Area Zero Under Deaths. Or even just having Noctowl in the deck in general. Just to make your deck more consistent. Another Sarah Ledge. A lot of Sarah Ledge. I'm actually surprised to see this much Sarah Ledge do this well in the City League so far. Just another Go Turbo build. It's got the new A-Spec, Squawk, Carmine Research, Pokestop. Just super turbo stuff. Some Charizards here. We'll look at the Lugia um, here that is in top four. It's Lugia with a Monkey Dory. Now, that's an interesting concept. So, Monkey Dory could be cute in Lugia. I mean, healing your Pokemon isn't bad. It's pretty easy to get Luminous Energy on it. I guess, like, the one downside of playing Monkey Dory, though, is finding the bench space for it. But, again, if you're playing the Wellspring Ogre Pond, maybe you can play into Area Zero Under Depths as your uh, stadium. So, yeah, Monkey Dory and Lugia is definitely an interesting concept. Maybe I'll try that out down the road. It's a interesting idea because it does let you do more damage, too, which is, like, sneakily kind of good. Um, which, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Uh, let's see. Nothing else too crazy in the top eight here to look at. Uh, let's go to this tournament here, which once again was won by Raging Bolt. Another more standard Raging Bolt. This does play that one in Briar, though. We got a Palkia Dusnor here within the second place. It did lose to Raging Bolt. I would feel like that matchup's probably a little bit closer. Um, yeah, Palkia Dusnor. Not many new cards in the new in this deck. Like, probably no new cards, actually, looking at it. Um, Secret Box, the Ace back, playing a Mini or two. Probably helping for that Snorlax matchup. 
Interesting. There's a great Tusk Mill here that made it into top four. Tusk Mill looks kind of fascinating right now with neutralization zone. Something that I maybe want to try out. So I did book Trio Mill with neutralization zone. Maybe it'll be time to try out Great Tusk Mill. Um, one new card in the deck is, like I said, that Gravity Stone. This card's popping up a lot more frequently than I thought. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, more Charizard and stuff. Let's just go on to the next page here, I guess. We can look at the first page here, which are all a lot more recent tournaments. Uh, a lot of Guardi winning. We'll click on uh, the first one here. Uh, let's see. We'll look at the winning Guardi list, I guess. Yeah, Guardi. No new cards. Again, nothing really too crazy with Gardevoir with, like, from the new set. Just kind of stays the same. A couple Dragapults here. We got a Dragapult Pidgeot deck here. Playing Mela and Crispin, but also playing Sparkling Crystal. And, like I said, playing the Gravity Stone. <laughs> crazy stuff. I'm trying to think what matchup Gravity Stone helps in. Is there, like, okay, I could be losing it, but is there any matchup that card is good in? Like, it stops Tastic Geary, I guess, but it's not really a common card. Uh, we got a Dragapult Zatu here also. No Pidgeot, but just play the Sparkling Crystal. No Crispin, though, or anything like that. But yeah, interesting stuff. Look at this Lugia that got top eight. Playing the Wellspring Ogre Pond. No hands. That's interesting. Handsless Lugia. With all the Guardi, I'm surprised it's not playing the hands in the deck. All right, we'll go to the next tournament here. Uh, let's see. We'll look at the winning Guardi list, I guess. We'll like, look at the winning list because I want to see the deck that won the tournament. But again, nothing too fascinating within this build. Two Devos, though. Uh, let's see. We got a couple Dragos. We'll look at the Reggie Drago here real quick. Yeah, no new cards. Again, Drago doesn't really gain anything with the new set. Um, I don't know if it gets better or worse. Who knows? Um, another Drago, of course, playing Haxorus in here, um, the Cleffa and stuff. Again, no new cards, but again, Drago doesn't need to play anything. Another Sarah Ledge we can look at, you know, another Turbo, I guess it's called Turbo Sarah Ledge, just playing the Sarah Ledge, the Squawk, the other Ace Spec card and stuff like that. Again, we'll probably get this deck eventually with Surging Sparks, so it's a little early right now, but still cool to see that deck actually seen as much play as it is. Uh, this, now, this tournament here was won by the Dragapult Pidgeot deck, and Dragapult Pidgeot starts to win a lot more tournaments here on the second page, I found, and uh, we can see this build is playing the Sparkling Crystal 2, it's got the Gravity Stone, really, what matchup is that good in? I am, like, really, somebody's got to comment that, because I'm, I'm probably missing something here, um, but Scott Crispin and Sparkling Crystal. And Dragapult is looking like a new top deck. It even got second place, too. So the two Dragapult decks did end up battling out here in the finals of the tournament. Interesting, there's a Blissey Ogre Pond box deck here. Now, Blissey is a little bit more interesting within this new format, mainly because it gains a Glass Trumpet, which could be a pretty cool way to play Blissey. So Blissey definitely becomes a lot more interesting within this new set. There's a few ways I've seen Blissey being played. We've looked at, like, the Galvantula decks and stuff, but who knows? Maybe Blissey gets a lot better with Glass Trumpet, and maybe it's worth looking into Blissey a little bit more now. It definitely has potential to be a good card. Maybe it's just missing something, and Glass Trumpet could be the card it's missing. Hmm. It's got the Ogre Ponds in there. We do have Monkey Dory. It's more of like a Blissey deck, just with a few Terra Pokemon, because you need to play Terras for Trumpet and stuff. Also playing a 1-1 one, one for Rigoraf to help fix the matchup against Raging Bolt, which is cool. Uh, let's see, another Sarah Ledge here in the top eight, playing just the Super Turbo stuff. Uh, we got another Maridon to look at here. Yeah, once again, Maridon with Area Zero Under Depths and the Mewtwo EX to bench more Pokemon. Really cool stuff, cool stuff, cool stuff. And I like, yeah, I like the idea of that, because you can just lean into the... Uh, you can lean into the, what, what's his face more, the, the Raikou. This tournament here, we got a Charizard Dustmore deck here doing well. Once again, playing, okay, now this Charizard deck does play Grand Chief. So this is like the first Charizard deck we've seen so far, um, potentially that I've looked at. I mean, there could be another one from the other tournaments I didn't click on, but uh, this Charizard Great Tree deck is interesting. So Great Tree doesn't work with Charizard in my best cards video. Somebody pointed that out, and I'm like, I know it doesn't work with Charizard's ability, but you can use it with the other Stage 2. Like, the, the Charizard deck is not just playing Charizard. It's the Stage 2. You can get Pidgeot to play for free. You can get Dustmorn to play for free. Like, that is a very strong effect. It's not all about putting Charizard into play. Like, yes, you do get access to Charizard, but you can't use the ability. The point is, you can use it to get all the other Stage 2s into play, which makes your deck have a lot more consistency. You can also use it to get, like, the bulkier Stage 1s uh, out, like Pidgeotto. This helps you against Devo. Like, if Gardevoir is going to be more popular, it's not a bad thing to have protection against Devo with having a 90 HP Pidgeotto under than a 6 HP Pidgey. You know what I mean? So that's, that's kind of the logic I'm getting at. You can also turn your Super Rods into Dust Nords, which is insane. So, like, Grand Tree, or Great Tree is just an insane card in Charizard. But the problem is you're sacrificing Unfair Stamp, Hero's Cape, and Prime Catcher. It's a Greninja Baxcalibur deck here. Whoa, crazy stuff. It's a cooking deck here. Holy moly. It's got Dust Nord, Chen Pao, Kyogre, Squawk, Rodom, Fez, Lumineon. Holy moly. Bro, burnt the kitchen down. That's crazy. A lot of stuff in this deck, but uh, there's a lot of potential with Greninja still. Greninja EX is a really cool card. It's cool to see it get top four. Uh, another Quad Thorns here. Again, no new cards. Don't think it really gains anything with the new set. 
We got an Arc Dusnor deck with a Greninja. Okay, interesting. I'm I'm fascinated. I guess it's more of like a Arc Greninja Dusnor deck, more of this like an Arc Dusnor deck. I did a video on this deck recently on the channel, the main channel. So definitely check that out if you want to see some gameplay of the deck in action. Even though I didn't play the Greninja, obviously my list was a lot different, but cool stuff. I mean, Arc V Star still exists, still a really strong card. Um, let's see here, anything else? We got. Hold on, a Lost Zone Great Tusk deck. Wait, hold no, wait, what? Yo, hold up. It is not a Lost Zone. Okay, that's actually pretty funny. It's not a Lost Zone Great Tusk deck. It's a Comfy deck, but it's playing the new Comfy, which makes each player draw three cards, which actually can deck your opponent out because you force them to draw three cards. That's technically giving your opponent three more cards out of their deck. So that technically can deck your opponent out. That's a really funny card. That's kind of cool. So it's like a Comfy Tusk Mill like control deck. That's pretty funny, actually. That's a good bait and switch. That's pretty funny, actually. I rate it. I rate it. Uh, we're just so used to seeing, like, uh, like Lost Zone. All right, this tournament was won by uh, Reggie Drago, so it's still existing in the new format. It really just depends on how popular stuff like Palkia and these other Area Zero Under Death decks get, which will probably dictate how good Drago's going to be. Another Maraidon, once again, playing the Mewtwo EX here. Uh, another, you know, Dragon Ball Pidgeot playing the Dustmore in the deck. It's got the... Crystal got Thornton and Crispin in the deck. We got another Arc, a Dustnor. Once again, playing Greninja... Pretty much the same, almost the same 60 from the tournament we just looked at. I think it was minus, like, one card, like the Klefki. I was Ancient Box doing good. Ancient Box still seems okay in this format. Um, again, doesn't gain any new thing. I don't think you want to play the new Raging Bolt in the deck. I don't think Raging Bolt is very useful within Ancient Box. Um, yeah, just kind of stick to the moon, I guess. Play Coridon, maybe play Tusk, whatever. The same old stuff. There's a Dragapult Dustmore deck here. Now, this one does not play Pidgeot, but it does play the Noctowl. So it kind of gives you a bit more of a draw engine. You can, of course, use Noctowl with Dragapult as Noctowl works with Terras. And, hey, Dragapult happens to be a Terra Pokemon. It's cool stuff. Just straight in on the Dragapult. Sparkling Crystal. No Pidgeot or anything. No Zatu. Interesting. We'll look at the other Drago list here. Yeah, no new cards. But maybe maybe we'll see something new in Drago. I don't think it's going to play the new Raging Bolt, to be fair, though. I don't think Drago's going to play the new Raging Bolt. All right, let's see. We'll go on this tournament here. It's won by Charizard Pidgeot, of course, with the Dustnor and has the Briar, which is like the one new card you'll see, unless they're playing Great Tree. Another Maridon deck here. Now, this Maridon build is not playing the Mewtwo, just sticks to the old formula of playing the Academy at night and stuff. Another Guardi here in top four. Did probably lose to the Maridon. Makes sense. Um, or lost to the Charizard, which also ended up getting top four. Actually, no, it didn't. No, yeah, lost to either Charizard and Maridon. One of the two. So Pidgeot Control in top uh, eight here. That's interesting. So we'll see how Pidgeot Control does in the new format. I'm not too sure how it's going to do. I'm not a control expert. But, I mean, if Drago gets less popular, maybe it's good. I mean, maybe it struggles more into, like, Dragapult 2, though. That's the thing. Like, Dragapult is just a really difficult card for this deck to deal with. Um, but it does have all the toolbox of stuff. It's got the Snorlax. It's got a Noivern in the deck to help wall some stuff off. It's playing my Lotix. So you can't play Turo. You got the Double Ogre Pond package. Mimikyu in the deck. Um, I don't think there's any new cards from any of the new set. Yeah, no Gravity Stone. Yeah, no new cards, but, you know, doesn't really need anything new. And we'll look at the top eight. There's a Frostlass Snorlax Monkey Dory deck here in top eight. Really interesting way to play the Frostlass deck. I guess this is a less toxic version of Snorlax because you can't play the game, but you can still play the game if that makes any sense. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to the next tourney here. This top eight, we see another Turbo Sarah Ledge. Interesting stuff. Um... Move on to another tournament. We'll click on the Moon Tournament here. A lot of Moon in this tournament. Jeez. So the deck that won the tournament was Turbo Moon. Playing an unfair stamp as the A spec. Interesting choice uh, for sure. Actually, oh, it's more of a... It's kind of more of an ancient box deck, actually. I think it's more like Ancient Box than Turbo Moon. Because um, I didn't realize there's four Baby Moons. The deck that got second place was the Palkia Dustnor deck. So yeah, no new cards. No Area Zero Under Deaths. Kind of interesting to see. I don't know, man. Like, Palkia the new stadium seems cracked, but... It seems that Palkia Deathstorm just maybe is the better way to play it. I'm not sure. Um, we got a couple of Sarah Ledge decks here that actually ended up making it in top four. Ooh, the Drill Burst is kind of smart. You can discard three energy for free, which does fuel up the attack by 60, which is kind of smart, actually. We got another Sarah Ledge here. Turbo Sarah Ledge, just, you know, Squawk ability. No other, not really any other Pokemon being played other than, like, Squawk and stuff. A couple Moon Petches here. Uh, this one has Water Energy in there. Only one, though. Kind of a bait and switch, probably. And then we got another Moon playing a Mighty Mochi and two Ancient Booster Capsules. That's interesting. Uh, then we got another Reggie Drago here in the top eight. Um, this one doesn't play Gudra or anything. No Mew or Cleffa. 
So it's interesting. He does play the one new Terra Ball card. Also playing Power Glass. Power Glass is kind of cool. You can put that on your Drago. So if you do Kiram, you can actually recover the energy. So it lets you use Kiram more often, which is kind of cool. And there's some Venomoth Frostlass in top eight. A really fun, like, rogue one prize deck. Can be very annoying to play against if your deck relies on items, like if you're playing a Charizard deck or something. So really cool deck. Um, definitely a fun one. I've done a few videos on it already on the main channel. A lot of fun to play. Uh, let's see. This tournament was won by Dragapult Pidgeot. Playing the Dustnor, playing the new Terra Ball card. We're not getting that, but it does have Crispin, Sparkling Crystal. Moon got second place with Unfair Stamp. Unfair Stamp Moon, crazy stuff. I mean, I may, it makes sense. If you can, like, pull off a Frenzy Gouge Unfair Stamp combo and they can't respond, it's kind of insane. Now, this Dragapult's Atu deck does also play a brand new card now. This new card, once again, is not coming out for a while because it came out in the Sylveon Serra Ledge starter decks, but it does allow you to search deck for any number of basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. That's kind of crazy. Being able to fill your bench out with basic Pokemon is kind of nuts, especially when you can, like, Arvin for this. Like, it's a battle VIP, like, on steroids almost, or an Espelon on steroids if you want to treat it like that. And in a setup deck like that, it definitely makes sense to play it. There's a Lost Tina on top eight. Again, another deck that, to be fair, like, looking at it, I don't think it's going to gain any new cards from the new set, but it's cool to see Lost Tina still kicking around, I guess. Um, and we just looked at that. Uh, let's see. We got the Ancient Box deck won this tournament. It's Ancient Box with Tusk. So, yeah, no Karidon, no Walking Wake, just Tusk. Let's play a one of Monkey Dory, though, which is a cool idea. Because um, you can use that to, like, heal, I guess, if that ever comes up. And you can also use it for more damage output if you ever get damage on your stuff. I guess it really just helps into the Dragapult matchup, which Dragapult seems to be getting more popular right now in Japan. We've been seeing a lot of it so far. Probably the most popular deck we've looked at, actually, is Dragapult. So, it makes sense. Um, this one does have a Devo in the deck, so that's interesting. What else is in this? Nothing too crazy in the top eight to look at, I don't think. Uh, let's see. We got... Yeah, we looked at that, I think. Uh, we got Raging Bolt here winning this tournament. Raging Bolt with the new one of uh, Baby Raging Bolt and Briar being the two new additions in that Bolt build. Interesting thing about this tournament here. We got a Palkia Ogre Pond deck. Whoa, that's spicy. I've actually seen this before. Um, so the idea is you have Ogre Pond. You know, Ogre Pond's a pretty good attacker. You can use it against Zard. Palkia does struggle in a Zard. You have Ogre Pond. It doesn't do as bad. This Palkia build also can now play Area Zero under deaths in the deck alongside the Ogre Pond. So really cool ideas. This maybe could be better than playing Terrapagos Palkia. I'm not too sure. Cool idea, though. Also playing the Dusknoir in the deck also for that extra bit of, like, damage and stuff. That's cool. And then we got a uh, Bayonet Frostlass deck here. It's a cool idea. I haven't done a video on this deck, I don't think. There's actually a few ways to play Bayonet that I want to look at. Bayonet Frostlass definitely is a cool concept, though, for sure. Um, I like that. I like that. All right. Let's see what was next. Another you know, Charizard deck here winning this tournament. All right, there's a lot of variety in here. Um, Charizard list at one. Play Pidgeot. Ace back with Hero's Cape. Had Briar. And we got a Lost Box deck here. Now, this is a cool Lost Box build. We see a lot of different Pokemon in the deck. You only usually see in the deck. For starters... The deck plays Lost Zone's number one op, Kiram, but you can Mirage Gate to Kiram, I guess, powering up the Kiram, or you can use it in the Mirror Match, I guess, which is kind of cool, or you can use it in other situations where your opponent happens to play a Corsus Tenacity, so that's a cool idea. Um, that's one thing to note about this Lost Zone build. There is no Radiant Pokemon. I just realized there is no Greninja. That's interesting. It does play Okie Dogie and Cornerstone Ogre Pawn and Ursaluna and Mimikyu. I mean, it did get top four. Or it got second place even, which is kind of interesting. Got an Ancient Box here playing at Screamtail and Walking Wake. Just Wonder Treaters. Uh, another great Tusk Mill. So Tusk Mill might be a thing. Who knows? Maybe it's good with uh, Neutralization Zone. Maybe it gets better with the new set. Who knows? It's cool to see, though. Got another Dialga here. Dialga Matang with the Bibberol. It's got Basque Legion in the deck, too, to get energy back. Playing Survival Brace also... I see a spec of choice alongside Arvin. That's an interesting idea. I guess making your Dialga survive a hit is just insane. Um, honestly, that's not a bad A spec to play. We got a Palkia um, deck here. Once again, playing the Area Zero Under Deaths. Did say Bibril, but it was playing the Area Zero Under Deaths. The Bibril is a nice challenge. And hey, I'm a Bibril stan, as you all know. Uh, this build does play Terrapagos and Cornerstone Ogre Pond as the Terra Pokemon over Wellspring. But yeah, Terrapagos obviously is like a naturally good partner with Palkia V-Star. Kind of makes sense in that build. All right, let's see. This deck, or, holy moly, this tournament was four Lugia, or three Lugia in top four. Jeez Louise. We got Lugia here with the Raikou Radiant Charizard. So, yeah, Raikou pop, more popular now within Lugia. Um, ever since it got ninth at Worlds, it makes more sense to play Raikou in the deck because you can play Light Energy. We got Lugia here playing just the Sinchino, got the Wellspring, and then the Lugia also that got top four here plays Shaman in the deck, so that's cool. Yeah, Shaman will help against Charizard. You can put Legacy Energy on it and then attack it. Also playing Radiant Charizard in the deck, too, as Lightning Attacker. It does have Weirder. No Sinchino, though, in this Lugia deck, it looks like, so that's interesting. Uh, a couple more Sarah Ledges here in top eight. 
That's got the drill bird. We got another turbo Sarah Ledge playing this new Azumarill, which once again, we're not getting until Surging Sparks, but this Azumarill is actually really cool. So if you have a Terra Pokemon to play, this Pokemon's attack can be used for one Psychic Energy. And as you can see, Double Edge does 230 for one energy potentially with that Sarah Ledge in play, which is honestly kind of crazy. Um, yeah, a good one prize attacker that can KO basic EXs for one energy is kind of broken, to be honest with you. So this Azumarill might be really good when it does come out. This is the first instance we're seeing of it, which is kind of cool. Um, next we'll look at this ninth place list here. We got an Aegislash EX Bibberol deck playing Grand Tree. Yo, being able to Grand Tree, Great Tree, whatever it's called, out an Aegislash with the ability that Mimikyu has and to play in one turn is honestly kind of broken. So kind of like that, actually. It's a cool idea. Definitely excited to try out Great Tree. There's a lot of cool combos with that card, which is what I like about it. This tournament, once again, won by Dragon Ball Pidgeot. Again, you can see Dragon Ball Pidgeot doing pretty good right now. And it did beat a Lost Box deck in the finals. It was a more traditional Lost Box, just playing the Moon in the deck. No hands or anything, just playing Moon or Saluna Fez. Fez is a huge upgrade to Lost Box. This build does play Canceling Clone and three Pokestop, though. So it is still pretty turbo, even though it's not playing stuff like Iron Hands within the deck. There's a Goldengo Palkia deck here in top four. Uh, no new cards, but again, Goldengo is one of those decks that like maybe doesn't really gain anything. And then we got a Dragapult Zatu here in the top four plane, that one of Sparkling Crystal for the Ace spec. We've got a Palkia Noctowl deck here with Tropagos. Just like three Tropagos, so it's kind of like a Palkia Tropagos deck. Playing the Iron Leaves in the deck, too. Again, Iron Leaves is interesting. Does help against Charizard, which could be a bad matchup. I actually kind of like this build because you can Glass Trumpet to your Tropagos, and you can Glass Trumpet the Grass Energy to play for the Iron Leaves. That's a cool idea. And then it's got the Noctowl and the Bibberol, so decent amount of consistency in the deck, actually. Yeah, more of like a Tropagos Palkia like split deck, but Tropagos still is pretty good. I mean, it's basically like probably the, one of the best, if not like the best EX in the deck at least, but maybe one of the best cards in the deck or the set. So it's cool to see that in this tournament here. All right, let's see what else we got here. This deck, this tournament here, won by Dragapult Pidgeot, playing Crispin and Sparkling Crystal. No, look, there's any of their new decks. We got a Lugia Cinchino here, but yeah, nothing crazy. He does play Clefki in the deck, which is interesting. Um,. Yeah, nothing too crazy. A lot of Lugia lists we actually were looking at were playing Clefkia. I forgot to mention that. Uh, let's see here. Dragapult Zatu did win this tournament. You can see a lot of Dragapult success right now. So who knows? Dragapult might be a top deck. Like, look at this. We got Dragapult, Dragapult, Dragapult. Like, Dragapult, Dragapult. Just a lot of Dragapult doing well. So Dragapult's looking pretty good, like I said, with the new set. Nothing crazy in that tournament anyways. All right. Move on to this one. It was won by a Raging Bolt with a Briar in the deck. No other new cards. Again. Just a deck that doesn't gain anything really all that new. Another Dragapult Pidgeot deck here with the Devo. Got Crispin, Sparkling Crystal. I want to see if there's any Dragapult Charizards, actually. I haven't seen it yet. Um, maybe I just haven't clicked on Tournament with one that's in it, obviously. Maybe, though. Maybe it's good. Um, we got another Moon with the Unfair stamp based spec. <laughs> Crazy stuff. We got a couple Palkia Dustmores here um, with uh, just Cram and stuff. This one playing Minior, But they're not playing Area Zero Under Deaths, which is like the big takeaway with those Palkia Dustmore decks. Fascinating stuff. All right, Lugia won this tourney here with the, uh, you know, it's got the Raikou and the Charizard. Looks similar to the list we already look, looked at already. Raging Bolt in the finals with the Briar. A couple Zards. Yeah. It was a Dragapult that got here. Okay, Dragapult Pidgeot with no Dust or anything. Playing Radiant Alkazam, though, so Radiant. Um, playing two League Headquarters, Devo, Gravity Stone, Crispin, stuff like that. Cool stuff. And then we got a Sarah Ledge here. In the top eight. Yeah, Sarah Ledge looking like it's actually going to be like a, a legit decent deck. We'll see how popular Palkia is. That's like maybe the one thing that's going to hold the Sarah Ledge back is the Palkia matchup. Now the Dragable Pidgeot. No uh, dust or anything. Just Dragable Pidgeot with Halucha and stuff. Cool thing. All right, all right. Let's see. We got, what, a couple more tournaments to go. We got this tournament here won by Dragapult. There you go. And then just more like Charizard, Ma Guardi. Right? Yeah, it looks like any IC format, bro. All right, we'll look at the last two tournaments here of the City League before we wrap things up. So this tournament was won by Lugia with Cinchino. No hands, though. Just play that Wellspring Ogre Palm, but yeah, no iron hands. The It was able to beat Dragapult. That's maybe one thing about playing Dragapult. If Dragapult does become this good with Stellar Crown, uh, Lugia could help off set it because like lugia should theoretically have a good dragapult matchup when he can play mist energy cinchino's being really good too to one shot dragapult yeah doesn't seem like a bad deck there's a lost box deck here in top four looks like the turbo build with the lightning stuff's got the raikou in the hands no iron thorns i'm not sure how good thorns is going to be within this new format but yeah it's, i'm happy to see lost box do good i mean again if drago's falling off and to be fair i don't think we've seen a drago deck yet win a tournament we've seen a few in like top eight and stuff but i don't think we've seen one win a tournament yet um, and if Drago's going to fall off, like, there's not that much Drago in these tournaments. Like, even this tournament here, 
There's literally no Reggie Drago in the top eight. If there's like a lack of Drago, which is crazy to see the deck maybe fall from grace this hard, um, though I think that might lie. Who knows? But uh, it's cool to see Lost Box do well. I'm always happy to see that. Got a Lugia Sinchino. This one does have Iron Thorns in the deck. So this one does got the Spice. Even playing Future Booster and Arvin in the deck. Future Booster is interesting. Letting Iron Hands do 140 is kind of gas, especially against um, Pidgeon and uh, Palkia. And we got another Lugia deck here. Another Lugia like toolbox deck. Playing Thorns in Hands, Wellspring Ogre Pond, Flutter Main. A lot of different variety of options, which is kind of cool. But nope, no Sinchino, so uh, it's cool. Yeah, I like it. Thorns, I guess, could help in the mirror, right? Just kind of makes sense. On the Dragapult Pidgeot here, playing the Dust Snore and the uh, Crispin, Sparkling Crystal. There's a Snorlax, once again, in top eight. Snorlax ain't going anywhere, folks, and uh, hate to say it, but it's going to be around most likely until it rotates because people are just not going to respect it, and then it's going to rebound, and it's just like an endless cycle of Snorlax. Uh, I think we just looked at that deck, actually. We had a Tina in top eight. Crazy to see Tina still do well, but again, no new cards. Just Tina just doesn't really need anything new. Um, and then finally, looks like the last tournament here we got is, of course, won by a Raging Bolt. Um, last tournament that's been updated on Limitless here. Raging Bolt did win the tournament. Um, no new cards, but again, doesn't need any new cards. But interesting enough here, the deck that got top four is a Charizard Greninja deck. So I've actually been seeing this deck in a few online tournaments recently. I'm not sure what the Greninja really helps with in Charizard, but I don't know. Matching Charizard with Stage 2 Pokemon isn't a bad idea. I mean, I've done it with Dragapult. We've seen it with Pidgeot. And this build is playing, I mean, keep in mind, this build has four Stage 2 Pokemon. Dustnor, Pidgeot, Greninja, Dragapult, or Dragapult, Dustnor, Greninja, Charizard, Dustnor, I mean, sorry. And Pidgeot, yeah, crazy. Just four Stage 2s. Interesting, too, the A-spec is Hero's Cape. Um, playing Power Glass. Power Glass is cool with Greninja. You go Mirage, Barrage, and then you can get the energy back with Power Glass. I guess the Dustnor allows you to like knock stuff out and then you can like you can knock out Manaphy and then you grin into Mirage Barrage. I guess it's like kind of the concept. Cool stuff. That's an interesting idea. Another Dragapult Dustnor here. Um a lot of a lot of stage two action. Stage twos might be getting good. Who knows? Uh looking looking that way. Outside the top uh, eight here, there's an Arctina. That's the deck I haven't seen in a long time. Not sure how good the deck is. Um just play a Crispin. Crispin's not a bad idea. It's, you know, gets an energy on Arceus. You can also put an energy on your Giratina. Also playing Radiant Charizard and Blood Moon, so more like an Arc Tooly box style deck. Only having a 1 1 Bibro, but let's play a Tessigiri, though, to make up for it, I guess. Um, we got another Charizard Pidgeot with Dustnor playing Mist Energy, Max Belt. So, yeah, there you go. Those are all the city leagues. Again, we could go through every city league, but we would be here for a while. I mean, this video's already been like over 40 minutes, so I'm going to wrap things up there with that. But I mean, hey, man. Every day there's going to be more City League, so this is going to keep updating every single day with term results. I'll leave a link to Limitless here, the site I'm using down in the description below if you want to go check it out for yourself. But I'm definitely excited to get back into the City League content. It's another good way to just kind of see what's winning in Japan because we actually have, like, decent term results to look at. So I'm definitely excited for more of these videos in the future. Some things to take away. Dragapult is doing really, really good. Um, winning a lot of tournaments. Charizard still existing um, I guess no, there was one tournament where Drago did win, I lied. Yeah, one of the one of the tournaments was won by Drago. But uh, Drago could be falling off a little bit. There's a lack of Drago in this meta. Um, a lot of Lugia, you know, honestly, I'm not going to lie. It is kind of more the same. There's just kind of more Palkia and Sarah Ledge were like the only like two new decks that I saw more often than not. So I'm not sure how impactful the new set's going to be. Hopefully this is not what our meta's going to look like. It's kind of boring. Like, you know, there's not that many new decks doing well. So who knows? But, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe people just haven't figured out the broken at 60s yet because there hasn't been as much air zero under deaths experimentation as i thought there was there's a few palkias and stuff and you know there's a raging bull with it but not as much as i was hoping for but who knows maybe you know we'll see some more because it's still early on in the city league so we'll have to see what else is going to see play here but uh yeah hope you all enjoyed the video if you did leave a like if you're new to the channel subscribe down below help me on the reaching 17,000 subs and i'll catch you on the video very soon and uh, bye bye